It's the Fade Five Podcast with Brad Evans and Nate Lundy. Place your bets, yet get wagons. Brad, the big noise is here, joined by the good son, Nathaniel Lundy. It is indeed another edition of the Fade Five. And let's go down the dirty south, Lundy, and break down that region ahead of the beginning of the NCAA tournament. Uh, not as wide open as the Wild Wild West. And the East, which is the murderer's row of all the regions in this bracket, but still one that's going to be a challenge, I think, for number one seed Houston. So let's go ahead and honk, honk, hop aboard the plus bus, uh, looking at the various futures tied to the South region. And they share NCAAs. Uh, what plus 100 odds or greater wager is catching your eye? Let's take Marquette into the Elite Eight, Brad. Let's just do that. Ooh, like I that. really like I really like this at plus 225. If you look at that quadrant of the South region, they are the best team. Now, yep. could they stumble along the way? Of course they could. This is March Madness, and that sort of thing happens. However, if you look at that bottom portion of the quadrant before they would have to wind up against Houston, I don't think there is a massive threat to them within there. Are there some that could give them problems? Could they go on a on a shooting slump? Could they wind up with, you know, a couple of key guys in foul trouble? Of course. We could always wind up with that. But I really like the fact that at better than 2 to 1 odds, I don't necessarily have to take them out of the region. All I've got to do is get them out of that bottom quadrant. And I think a lot of people would agree that if you look at that bottom, sure, they could wind up matching up with Florida. They could, could Tad Boyle's CU Buffs go on a little bit of a run uh, and, and win their play in game and then wind up facing Marquette in uh, the round of 32? Of course. But I still think Marquette is the best team. I think they're, I think they have been tested. And I think going up against them or going up against Florida or even getting to the point of facing off with a, with a, 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 a Kentucky team, which, Again, Kentucky. Whew. Okay. We know they're hot. Okay. But, I know. But for me, if I look at that bottom of the quadrant, it is only Kentucky that I think is preventing Marquette. So it better than two to one, as good as I think the Wildcats are. I like the idea of the plus 225. But if I'm not mistaken, uh, you decided to throw on Team Huevos. Yeah, uh, indeed. Uh, Huevos y Gates. Hold my beer, Lundy. Uh, I'm going to go with Marquette just to win the entire South region. It's six to one odds in the best odds of business right now at Fandle Sportsbook. They're the biggest threat to Houston. Now, the $64,000 question is Will Tyler Kolick play? He is the best point guard in these United States of America and at the collegiate level. Uh, suffered an oblique strain uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I've heard some rumblings, Lundy, that he will be returning. When? Who the hell knows? I, I don't think, um, you know, Shaka Smart is going to aim against uh, WKU, the Hilltoppers. Adorable mascot, uh, the fastest paced team in the entire nation. And in this exercise, they're number two in adjusted tempo. Uh, they can, you know, fill up the cup because they just play at a stupid lightning quick pace. But Marquette with Cam Jones, he's uh, taken all the added responsibility and pass with flying colors. Also, Igadaro, they got a, a bunch of dudes. And Marquette has, uh, you know, played some tough games. Uh, of course, they played the rough and rugged Big East, and they showed their medal. They were number 11 at Bartoruk in the last 30 days, number 31 EFG offense, number 128 EFG defense. And again, a lot of that was without their best player on the damn floor. If Cola comes back and we'll see how much rust is accumulated, hopefully can shake it off in time when they get some more you know, meaningful action, say, against the Kentucky, maybe against Houston, the Elite Eight. Uh, but it's all about guards this time of year. And with Cola... Fingers and toes crossed, hopefully healthy and not limited. They are the team to beat, I feel, in this region. So I fired off at plus 600. With those bets on the board, let's get after it with another edition of the Fade Five. Number five. All right, again, all South region all the time here in this episode. And let's go with the zombie horde. Uh, that's what I've nicknamed them, the Houston Cougars. And I ain't afraid of no ghosts. I ain't afraid of no stupid high chalk. I'm going to lay the 24 and a half against a team that um, does not really match the nicknames that were given to me in high school, uh, Longwood. 
I'll let your mind wander on that. Uh, you look at Houston, a, a team that is number four in Bar Torvik over the last 30 days. And what is the MO of this team? Attack, attack, and attack you some more. Uh, they just force a ton of turnovers. They're annoying as hell to play against. Uh, they accumulate a ton of second chance opportunities. They beat you up inside defensively as well. And Longwood, you know, they got some turnover issues. Uh, they've coughed off the rock 16.5% of their possessions. Uh, that's number 184 in college basketball. Good rebounding team. A team that could shoot effectively from outside, ending over 41% from distance. But Houston, coming off the massacre that they suffered in the Big 12 Conference Tournament Final against Iowa State, uh, do you think Kelvin Sampson has been, you know, working those guys hard at like, I don't know, 5 a.m.? And again at noon and tripling down again one more time at 5 p.m. He's working them like dogs. They are going to be motivated. They are going to be fully prepared to exercise some demons. So pull it all together. I think Houston wins by 30 or more again over Longwood. Uh, the Lancers, I believe, minus 110 at DraftKings. Uh, Lundy, fade or follow. God, it's a lot of points, but you know what? Uh, Houston's pissed, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think, I think you're talking about what is arguably the best team in the country and they're ticked off coming out of the conference tournament. Um, and you know, we all know that all Kelvin's got to do is take his shirt off and start dancing oh, yeah. in the hey, locker baby. room. Hey, baby. Uh, and, uh, you know, you, you may not have such a long wood issue anyway. Um, <laughs> I just want to throw it out there. I, I look, I, it, they're pissed off. They lost in the conference tournament. They're ready to beat down on somebody. And I think it's unfortunately going to be Longwood. So take all the beat long wood innuendo you want out of this one. But, it's a God, it's a shit ton of points, Brad, but I think I can't help but lay it. I think this winds up being a 30 point blowout. I agree with you. Oh, it's all about that stiff D against, of course, naturally, Longwood. Number four. I uh, knew our quattro here on the feed five countdown. Uh, let's go and live in the land down under in a game that I think is going to be hideous to watch. And that is Duke and Vermont. Uh, the Catamounts uh, one of the slowest teams in the country. So is Duke. And that's why I like that uh, under at 132 and a half currently at Betham Jam at a minus 110. I may play this down to like 130 and a half, to be honest with you. I look at Duke in terms of Justin Tempo last 30 days, number 216, or excuse me, 316 in all of college basketball. Vermont, uh, they won up to number 329 in that category. Uh, the Catamounts, excellent defensively, number 36 in EFGD over the last eight games. are only allowing 48.7% inside the arc and 29% outside of it. Uh, Duke, meanwhile, um, you know, a little bit more forgiving defensively, number 104 in EFGD. Uh, with their most susceptible is along the perimeter, giving up 34.5% the opposition. They're only giving up 47.3% inside the arc. But Vermont really doesn't shoot the three all that effectively, uh, right around 33% over the last 30 days in that category. Duke is definitely more talented, uh, but I think the pace of play is going to be low possession variety. Uh, Kyle Filipowski, uh, I, I think, is going to be a, a menace uh, down low. And then you've got McCain outside. Duke is going to win this game. They may not score the cover on this one because of the low possession type of game that's going to be played. But I feel the under 132 and a half is the best bet. And I will say this, if Vermont somehow wins, get out of the way, Filipowski. You might get court stormed. Oh, do you mind injure your knee? Boo-hoo, fake injury, Luddy. Fade or follow. Wow. I mean, I thought we were railing on the committee yesterday. Now you're railing on Filipowski? I mean, you faked it, man. Just picking on the kid. Oh, yeah. So you windmill slam dunk like 48 hours later? Get out of here, man. You had to be carried off. Oh, I might have tore my ACL. I might have shattered my kneecap. It was merely a bruise, if anything. Wow. Folks, there's a lot of anger going on there yeah. in uh, in central Illinois right I'm now. I'm preparing mentally for all the bets I'm going to lose, Lundy. Oh, well, that is true. Uh, because history <laughs> history will tell you, just fade the living crap out of the public uh, on everything. Yeah. 
in uh, the tournament. So, you know, if we Brad and I'd be happy to share with you what the public's doing, according to our friends over at BetMGM, and then all of you can just decide to bet against them, uh, which might be the best possible thing to do. Uh, Brad, let me give you a twist on this one. How about this? Just let me know. Um, uh, just let me know what uh, what you think. Uh, I literally did this at DraftKings while you were speaking. Hmm. While you were speaking, young man. Hmm. Are you ready? Are you ready? Uh -huh. uh, yes, a little SGP over at DraftKings. So obviously, folks, depending upon the book you like to play and all that, a lot of them are offering you little boosts that you can do on SGPs. So this might be one that you could tweak even more because if you could tweak it even more and use some kind of a boost, you probably should. But just at DraftKings, straight up, no boost, no nothing, under 138 and a half, Duke minus six and a half. Okay. Is that Plus, the lowest you can go on Duke? No. You can take them all the way down to five and a half. And how high can you take Vermont up to? Uh, you can take Vermont up to 17. Okay, so here's how I play it, Luddy. Maybe you can put okay. this together on the fly because I'm curious yep. what the juice is going to be. I would take Duke uh, down to the lowest available uh, spread total there at minus five and a half. Jack okay. Vermont up to the highest at what, plus 17, plus 17 and a half. Uh, okay. Then Jack uh, the over under to the highest total and slam that under. So okay. you're living in the middle, I like to call it. I wrote about the strategy in the game and juice.com. Mm -hmm. What does that pay out? That one at DK gets you to a plus one, hang on, plus 196. Now, remember, DK caps mm -hmm. their, their middling options. Yeah. BetMGM gives you a whole bunch more. BetMGM actually gives you more options when it comes to the idea of trying to play the middle. They will stretch it further than what you can do over at DraftKings. So I tell you what, by the time we wrap, by the time we get through the top five here on the fade five, give me a minute and I will build the same type of thing. So keep listening, folks, and keep watching. I'm going to build the same concept over at BetMGM and then we can compare what we've got. All right, so I'm going to live in the middle. Screw it. Uh, but if you want to take a singular bet, take the under 132 and a half. Duke and Vermont, first to 60 wins. Number three. Numero tres here on the Feed 5 a podcast, a South Region edition. Uh, let's go with the Kentucky Wildcats and Blue Blue Nation. I'm going to take the over on team total points. At number seven, 88 and a half. Grab this at DraftKings at a minus 110 juice. Uh, you know, Kentucky, all they do is score in bunches. Uh, you know, we already talked about this. Uh, they really pile up the points. A team uh, that just splishes and splashes from outside. They attack the rim. They beat you at all points on the floor. Here is the evidence of back it up. You look at the Wildcats, number three in the country, an effective field goal percentage offense over the last 30 days. They're shooting 58% inside the arc, ridiculous, and even more ridiculous, 43.5% outside of it. Uh, that's otherworldly. Reed Shepard, Dillingham, Antonio Reeves. Uh, these guys are just sopping wet all the time. You got to ring them out at the end of the game. Uh, they, you know, just easily get to 20, 25 points every single time they take the floor. Oakland played a, you know, rough and you know rigorous non-conference schedule. Uh, I think they can kind of hang in this game because Kentucky will see about playing defense. That's highly optional in their mind. Uh, but Oakland uh, just won 16 to EFG defense. They're giving up 48% respectable there inside the arc and 33.6% outside of it. But Kentucky, man, they're just going to rev the engine. Uh, they've gone over 90 points in a game 17 times this year. They will not remove foot from pedal. They'll just keep hammering the gas. So give me the over 88 and a half team total points against the Golden Grizzlies. Not in California. Oakland's in Detroit, Michigan. Minus 110 at DraftKings. Lonely fade or follow. Yeah, different Oakland than what you might be thinking about. Um, but uh, no, I, I, I like this one. I, I like the idea of them hitting 90. I think they put their foot on the gas. I think they stay on the gas. I think they do it the entire game. Um, and then we're not, you know, we're, I don't think we're sweating this. I got to be honest with you. I think they're I think they're at 80 by the time there's still like five minutes to go in the game, six minutes to go in the game. I think they're just going to throttle them uh, in terms of the scoreboard. I think we will be lighting it up as they knock out the other Oakland in the first round. Oh, yeah, maybe a celebratory cigar on the over 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, and another 88 and a half. 
18 total points on the Kentucky Wildcats. 1.21 gigawatts. Number two. <laughs> Numero dos here on the Fade 5 podcast. Uh, let's go to a matchup between uh, an appropriately seeded team in Nebraska and one not appropriately seeded in Texas A&M. In fact, I had Texas A&M out of my bracket, a big board projected field. Uh, they get in. Uh, they shouldn't be a single-digit seed, but whatever. I guess it's water under a bridge at this point. I, I like the Huskers here. I'm going to lay the un punto against the Aggies. Uh, they're not going to be throwing up thumbs saying gig them. Minus 110 there at FanDuel. We'll play this up to minus maybe even two and a half. I know in some markets it's at minus one and a half, but put some damn respect on the Huskers name. Uh, you know, they don't have a great history in the NCAA tournament because they've barely been in the NCAA tournament. I mean, this is only their seventh or eighth appearance in school history, but this is a team or last 30 days, number seven in the country, according to Bart Torvik's advanced analytics, uh, the number 60, 40 FG offense. But the reason why they are in the dance is single digit C defense, number 17 in EFGD over that stretch. You're only giving up 45.8% from two and listen to this Lundy. 25.3% from three. And they've been crazy good shackling the interior or exterior. Meanwhile, I look at uh, Tamu. Uh, yeah, the number 27 of Bartorvik, but uh, over the last 30 days, but that's deceiving. And you peel back the layers, the onion, number 321 in EFG offense and number 218 in EFG defense. The key for Nebraska to score the victory and the cover in this game is sealing off the glass. Texas A&M lives all second chance opportunities. They grab uh, an offensive rebound on 37.3% of their possessions here the last 30 days, but their offense stinks. I don't trust Radford and Taylor to show up. They've been wildly inconsistent, and it's all about who? Toby Naga time! The Japanese Steph Curry I didn't nickname him that. That's a nickname that has stuck with him for the uh, last couple of seasons. He gets hot to go along with Williams and Mast uh, and Hoiberg and some of these other players that Nebraska has, a very three-point reliant. They start piling up the triples. This thing could get out of hand. So I'm only laying a point here with the Huskers. You might say, oh, Evans, your Big Ten buys. I don't give a crap. Get the hell out of here with that. I'm going to lay the chalk. They're going to handle AM minus 110 at FanDuel. Lundy, better follow. Here's the thing. One of the teams that we think shouldn't have made the tournament is going to win in the first round. It's mm. going to happen. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm convinced. I don't know who it is, um, but it seems to always happen where there's one team that we've been all, we're all bit, you know, you're bitching about it. I'm bitching about it. Jay Billis is bitching about it. Everybody's complaining, <laughs> right? About so and so making the tournament because they shouldn't have and, and all of this. And there's always one of them that actually winds up making the pundits look stupid. And then the fan base is like, CJ, you didn't know what you were talking oh, about. Of course. Of course. Uh, and, every and, year. and seriously, Jay Billis has forgotten more about college basketball than 99.9% yeah. of the fan base it's out there. So you guys just shut the hell up. Um, but I will tell you this. Uh, if you have not been watching, Tominaga is so much fun. The Holy monster. crap. Yep. He is so much fun to watch. Folks, here's yep. what I will tell you. He wears number 30 because he loves Steph Curry. Okay? That's the reason that it is his jersey number. Um, he is absolutely the Japanese Steph Curry. Um, and he – dude can sink it from the logo. Okay? I mean, yeah. it, it is crazy how much he plays like Steph. Is he at that level? No. But from a college standpoint, he sure as hell is. Um, and he's a ton of fun to be able to watch. And I don't know that AM is going to have an answer for him. So I like the fact that we're laying a point. I don't think of the teams that we didn't think should make the tournament um, or that we were questionable about where they were seated, that AM is going to be the one to step up in part because I like this Nebraska squad. And again, if Tominaga gets hot, get the hell out of the way because A, he will kill the Aggies. And B, holy crap, are you going to have fun watching it, folks? Oh, Toby Naga time! Entertain me! And score me some cash as well. Number one. Numero uno here on the feed. Five South Region Edition. Oh, let's do it for the father of the Constitution, the fourth president of the United States. And a true fact, the man always wore black. And if you tell the team named after him, 
it will leave you in the black, appropriate of James Madison, plus five and a half, taking on the Wisconsin Badgers, minus 110 there at Bet M Gym. I might sprinkle a little action here on the money line. Here's the bottom line with Wisconsin. What version are we going to get? I don't know. They had an amazing renaissance in the Big Ten tournament. Uh, my Illini, you know, knocked them off the Big Ten tournament title game. But that team got stinking hot at the right time. A.J. Storer is getting buckets like crazy. Uh, really, a lot of their players are getting buckets like crazy. It was uh, kind of crazy just watching the resurrection of this team because they had dropped eight of their last 11 regular season contests. So we got to get that version of Wisconsin. Or the one that we saw in Minneapolis. I don't know. Uh, it's entirely up to you. I don't know, Jim. I don't know. Uh, I will give it the nitty gritty on the schools. However, you look at Wisconsin. Uh, they are uh, number 16 in Bart over the last 30 days. Uh, number 109 in EFG off. It's a downside for them. Even though they really caught fire offensively, they're still giving up way too much defensively. Number 277 last month in EFGD, surrendering 51.4% inside the arc and 38.2% outside of it. And that is a key number, folks, because James Madison can absolutely torch the twine from outside. They shoot nearly 54% from two, but get this, 42.1% from three. And they jack a shitload of three-pointers. A team that likes to play at a brisk pace. A team that defends really well. Number 41 at EFGD. Shackle the perimeter. They're probably going to limit uh, Klesman and Chucky Hupburn from a lot of those uh, three-point shots. Only give it a 29.7 along the arc. Get a lot of second-chance opportunities. And don't forget, too, remember they opened the season beating a Big Ten team on the road. And that was Michigan State in East Lansing inside Breslin. Pull it together. James Madison plus five and a half. I'll take him the points. Again, I'll sprinkle a little action on the money line. Uh, this could be your classic 12 over five, Lundy. Minus 110 juice on the standard spread at Bet MGM. My number one play in the South region. Vader follow. Um, I can I just pass? Here's why. Here's it's why. Weak. What? Yeah, oh, shut up. Um, here's here's part of the reason why. Um, like if I were going to do this, I might SGP it and bring the total up. Here's part of the reason why I think this is crazy. If you go and look at, um, Wisconsin. All right. Let me give you some facts. These are, uh, from our friends over at action network. I just want to throw these out there. Okay. The last 14 first round games, Wisconsin is 12 and two on top of that. They have made six. Sweet 16 since 2011. That basically means that about half of the Sweet 16s in the last 13 years have had Wisconsin in them. How weird is that? Like just this random, hey, Badgers going over to the Sweet 16. It's just weird to me. But then you got to throw on top of it that James Madison's won 31 games. They haven't <laughs> lost since January. And, oh, how about this little tidbit for you? The last three Sun Belt teams that were a 12 seed won at least one game in the tournament, if not more. Ooh. The last, let me repeat that. The last three Sun Belt teams that were a 12 seed at the very least won their first round game, if not more. So you've got this history voodoo thing going on with James Madison. But you also got this oddity in the fact that, like I said, in the last 13 years, Wisconsin has basically been in about half of the Sweet 16s that we've seen. So something has to give between these two teams, and that's part of why I'm not sure that I really want to bet it. If I did, I would likely alt-line it for James Madison and put it together with another alt-line um, somewhere else that I like something else where I kind of like the dog, but I want a few more points. So I could see taking JMU from five and a half up to say nine and a half, and then finding something else that I want to essentially treat like a four, five, six point teaser and play it that way. So I'm, it's not that I disagree with your JMU play. It's one of those that if I look at the history books, I just go, all right, this is, this is one of those matchups where something weird's going to happen. All right, my number one play on the board. Do it for the founding father. It's JMU plus five and a half against Wisconsin minus 110 
at BetMGM. All right, bonus time, Lundy. Out of the three remaining games uh, mm. that we have in this region, uh, we're looking at Texas Tech and NC State. We're looking at Marquette and uh, Western Kentucky. Uh, maybe got some more action in that one. Florida uh, or, and then the Florida play Florida and whoever the play-in is uh, between Boise State and Colorado. Uh, you know, pick your poison. What do you like? Um, a couple of things. First of all, as let me before I do that, as promised, Brad. Oh, went, yeah. Payoff. Okay, I went and did that. Now, here's what's crazy. SGP is not available at Caesars. SGP is not available at BetMGM for not that yet. game. But it is at FanDuel. So oh, here's what okay. I built at FanDuel just a few moments ago. So again, folks, we're going back to the Vermont Duke game on this one. So let's middle it. Brad, give me Vermont plus 20 and a half. Oh, hell yeah. Give me Duke minus two and a half. Yeah. Okay. And give me the under at 140 and a half. Yep. And plus 109. <laughs> hell yeah. That's how you live in the middle, folks. You might say, oh, that's a cowardly act. No, we're trying to make money here. Yeah, I'm trying to make money. I'm not trying to, you know, show everybody how, you know, uh, how daring I am. Uh, right. Trust me, like, you don't want me in a bar fight. I'll be hiding in the corner. Oh, um, um, right. Let me say this. I, I, God, I actually kind of like, it, 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 assuming everything goes the way I think it's going to go tonight, I kind of like Colorado State to be able to make it out and then possibly make it to the round of 32. I'm not sure that Boise State or CU will. Um, so I really want to see what kind of spread we wind up with after we know who um, Kentucky, or excuse me, who Florida is going to face. Um, but I think Florida was actually handed a gift with the two matchups here that are coming in from the play-in game. So even if Tad Boyle um, can do Boulder right and do the Buffs right and can actually live up to the damn roster that he had on paper coming into this season, I'm not sure that they would get past Florida. I think Florida gets out of the first round. I just kind of want to see what the spread is. Um, but from a bracket standpoint, I would take Florida regardless of who they're up against uh, coming out of that play-in game. The one that I'm curious about, Brad, and I just got to—I have to lean on you because you've watched so much more of it than I have. I want to know what you think about the Red Raiders and, uh -huh. and NC State. Uh, that was going to be my play. So uh, of the three remaining games here, uh, I love NC State plus a four and a half. I don't trust Texas Tech as good as Pop Isaacs is. You look at some of the advanced numbers and I'm backing this up with the eye test as well. They haven't been that, you know, impactful offensively. Number 204 EFG offense the last 30 days. Uh, the defense has uh, waned number 149 EFG D over that same stretch. Uh, not only that, but I love the DJs. Uh, there. Hey, Mr. DJ uh, at NC State. I'm talking about DJ Horn and Mr. Burns. DJ Burns. If you haven't seen DJ Burns, uh, Terrence Oglesby at Field of 68 uh, described him perfectly. He is a refrigerator with ballerina feet. He's a big man. He's listed at 6'9", 275. He ain't 275, bro. Uh, he's easily like 3'10". But he moves incredibly well. His feet are un unbelievable. He's built like a you know a left tackle in the NFL, but he's a load in the post. And I don't think Texas Tech really has anybody that matches up well with him. And you look at NC State, they're shooting 36.5% from three uh, over the last month. So a team that's caught fire and probably getting the auto berth uh, in the NCAA tournament out of the ACC, I, I will take them plus the four and a half. I'm not saying they win. But this is probably going to be a low possession, maybe one possession type of game there in the end. Uh, anything else to add, Lundy, before we wrap? No, no. I mean, I, I, I believe this is a Houston Marquette region. I mean, I, I, it's gonna, I think it's going to come down to one of those two teams, uh, which probably means it's going to be something just completely obscenely awkward uh, and unpredictable out of that. But I do believe, um, you know, th there's some good teams in this region, Brad, but I believe that those two are head and shoulders above the rest. And I truly believe that Houston, um, I, you know, I know you did your plus 600 on Marquette. I don't think it happens. I don't think, I, I think Houston, um, maybe not rolls, but I think Houston gets to the final four with relative ease. How about Tyler Kolick, man? Just be healthy. Guard play wins this time of year. All right, I'm out of breath. We are out of time. Go sign up for a free account at thegamingjuice.com right now. Uh, my site, it's open for business. It's free. 
Everything is free right now. We're going to add some premium stuff down the road, but uh, I've got a ton of March Madness content up there. Uh, Lundy's NHL picks post there all the stinking time. We have other NHL picks posting as well. We'll have baseball content once the season gets underway on the regular uh, NFL content as well. Just go to gamingjuice.com. It's clean. It's awesome, and I'm really excited to be contributing the written word somewhere once again. Also, drop us a rating and review, would you kindly? Uh, Fade or follow us on the X or Twitter at Nate Lundy with all his free picks and myself at Noisy Huevos. Also, check out the other episodes, all the other regions. We're breaking them down the east, the west. We just did the south on this one, the Midwest. All posted to the Gaming Jews. Dot com for the outstanding Nathaniel Lundy. I'm Brad Evans. Until next time, as always, feed or follow. That is up to you.